I've debugged a, an Aristocraft wide radius turnout here. It's a right hand path, a 10 foot diameter diverging path. And what I have done, and it's stainless steel one here, <coughs> that's the box that it came in. <coughs> and what I've done was to set up a test track, uh, which happens to be an 8 foot diameter track and happens to have brass sections. And as can be seen in the box here, there are 16 pieces that comprise an 8 foot diameter curve. And uh, normally I would set this up in 10 foot diameter, but I thought I'd just, uh, with a 10 foot diameter curve, but I thought I'd try it with 8 foot diameter because some folks wondered if this would work. And it looks almost imperceptible as far as, uh, uh, it, it, uh, <coughs> as far as any kind of mismatch. It doesn't seem to mismatch at all. <laughs> And there are eight, 16 sections uh, in the in the path here of the <coughs> of the curvature <coughs> for the complete circle of track. It can be seen here, and then I have a straight path diverging down. And this is set up in my loft here above my garage. <coughs> and the idea was I basically wanted to try this. Uh, uh, turn out after the mods I had made <coughs> and uh, I'd put uh, metal guardrails spaced uh, 106 thousandths from the stock rail both sides and also put washers underneath them to elevate them up so that they're at least the height of the <coughs> stock rail and actually slightly slightly higher maybe 10 thousandths or so <coughs> I found that uh, uh, works fairly well <coughs> Uh, some people put uh, shims, and I've done it myself on some of these, but uh, using the actual guardrails, in this case I use brass because it's easier to bend, and also to uh, to machine with uh, drilling holes in the bottom to put the screws in. <coughs> They're retained by two screws, <coughs> two millimeter screws. <coughs> so, and one thing I found when debugging this, that this, uh, that the wheels on this uh, GP40 and also uh, an SD45, which is this one here. It's a Wisconsin Central, but it's been retrofitted with, in this case, Aristocraft motor blocks with uh, stainless steel wheels that they provided, which is rare. And uh, perhaps they, maybe they were inspired by my effort with stainless steel wheels, which I have on this GP40. And perhaps they got a hold of some and maybe replicated them. I don't know, but they look very similar. <clears throat> but at any rate, uh, there was a problem with the wheel striking this rail here, going into the diverging path, and looked at it under looked at it on edge with a magnifying glass and found that that the cross section of the rail is not straight up and down, but it actually is sloped somewhat. So I ground the slope so it's flat. Uh, that's on the side of the uh, of the uh, rail head, <coughs> and. Uh, and therefore the, the point uh, was much better aligned and it didn't stick, it, stick out as much. It was hard to see with the naked eye, <clears throat> but it was enough to make a difference. So that resolved that issue and also the loco and cars run very well over the uh, uh, guardrail path so that the wheels don't strike the uh, frog point. <clears throat> so that worked out quite well. <clears throat> so. Now I'm going to run it, run the train it is, <coughs> or at least the engine here. And this is an Aristocraft GP40 with datum precision stainless steel wheels that I had made for me. The flanges are about 80 thousandths deep. <laughs> And of course the critical thing is going into the diverging path here. <coughs> so I'll switch the turnout. <laughs> and it goes over quite well. Oops. I didn't switch it in the diverging path. <coughs> so it goes well over the straight path, so that's good to know. <coughs> So now I'll switch it to the diverging path. <laughs> the 
and it goes over very smoothly. Before I made the modification by grinding some of the material off the side of the stock rail to bring the point rail parallel and, and flush with it, uh, the wheels would bounce at that point, <coughs> actually bounce up in the air. <coughs> Speed it up here a little bit. And when I ran it fast before, it actually derailed. It goes over very well. That's at maximum speed. Of course, going in the opposite direction, away from the frog point and away from the point rails is a more forgiving path going through any channel. There's usually never any problem. Anyway. And there you have it. <coughs> Success. <coughs> With the Aristocrat wide radius turnout here, it's stainless steel one. Uh, not that that matters with brass or not, but <coughs> um, placed in the 8 foot diameter loop here is one of the sections. <coughs> um, there, is a, there is a slight gap here, and I've discovered about half of that is due to the tolerances of the track and, and um, the, the fact that this this particular rail probably should go that direction a little bit, having checked it with a uh, with a square. <coughs> so uh, it's so, certainly so close here, and some of the other uh, track sectors may have a gap. This is this is fine here, <coughs> but at any rate, it's so close that um, as one can see, laying the eight foot section over it, it's hard to tell the difference even though this is meant to be a ten foot diverging path, <coughs> a ten foot diameter type diverging path. <coughs> so I set up a small train here to run. <coughs> In this case it has a an SD45 on the front, the Wisconsin Central one. And so I'll back it into the loop here. Now this particular loco I retrofitted with uh, Aristocraft replacement motor blocks that came with their version of stainless steel wheels. And perhaps they were inspired by what I had done uh, with, for example, the GP40 here and also other SD45s, uh, Aristo-9s and E8, E9 logos. I've retrofitted them all with datum precision uh, made stainless steel wheels that I had 
uh, been made with the specifications developed by myself and Greg Almasian, as well as working with John Jans at Data Precision. But at any rate, apparently Aristo decided to come out with a short-lived uh, product here, and it's a motor block that they actually advertised that had stainless steel wheels, and they gave you the motor block with the wheels. So I had some problems. This is probably a maybe a second generation of many generations of SD45s and I had noisy gearboxes and the thing drew a lot of unnecessary current <clears throat> so I decided to try their motor blocks with their stainless steel wheels one thing that seemed to be kind of an issue was normally there's only one rigid axle uh, and they use sort of, sort of a padding to keep the axles from flexing <coughs> this, in this plane <coughs> and a vertical plane and the, the center axle normally can has allowed to flex and normally the, the axle closest to the fuel tank is allowed to flex and usually they have a rigid axle in the front in this case with their blocks both this axle and this axle in the front and the one by the fuel tank uh, were made rigid for some strange reason perhaps the factory wasn't given instructions but it seems to work on track work that's is very flat, <coughs> and, uh, and and I'll run the train here. And it can be seen that that it'll go over the modified uh, wide radius turnout for where I corrected the uh, issue with the point rail here. So you can see it goes to the straight path, all right, when it's headed toward the point rails and the frog point. Mm -hmm. So I'll switch it here. <clears throat> and like the GP40, uh, this local also had troubles where it would bounce over that point, that rail, before I uh, ground the stock rail down. And you can see it's a short train just with four cars. <laughs> And the loco and the cars are, have body-bound KD center sets, uh, with the exception of the last car and the caboose, which is an adapter car that goes from KD to uh, Aristocraft couplers. Train around. I turn the train around, and I'm going to push the train through the turnout, which is usually the most critical test. Again, headed toward the point rail, and headed toward the frog point, <coughs> which is the most critical part. So I'll speed it up here. goes through. There's maximum speed. the test.